There's so much about this country that is yet to be discovered just because it's cloaked in the veneer of the language. I want to find these sort of like hidden gems. There's this whole middle tier of, of artists here that, you know, don't, that aren't in the mainstream limelight every day, but they're just, you know, amongst the world's best musicians. They're just great players, they're creative people, they're great performers. Well, they just can't, you know, get any exposure. I can come in and help them with the, the global dimension and have them say whatever they want to say and know that people overseas are like, you know, able to understand what they're saying. If I want to help them. We'll see what we can do to make it happen. Being that diverse and doing that much uh, various tasks and work for, for various companies, what made you decide to get uh, to expand even further into the entertainment business? Well, it's... Um I see a need, actually. You know, I mean, I'm, mm. I'm personally interested, and I just find it interesting. And you know, I like you know, being around musicians and artists. You know, like you know, being from Nashville, that was just sure you know, enough. Art growing up. You know, mm -hmm. but yes, uh, I see a need uh, right now. There is, you know, people, millions of people all over the world that you know can't get enough of Japan. And it's not just the anime or the manga. It is the music. It's everything. And there's, uh, there's so much about this country that is yet to be discovered just because it's cloaked in the veneer of the language. You know, mm -hmm. just information about it or about the people or about an, art, an act is just not available in English. Um, and there's just no way to discover it. And so, you know, I do corporate communications work. That's just, you know, just basically simple communications in Japanese for Jap uh, excuse me, in English for Japanese companies, mm -hmm. you can do the same thing for Japanese artists. And, you know, I think the major artists, you know, who work for the big, you know, you know, the big stars, you know, they've, they've got, uh, you know, the resources to do whatever the, they actually choose to do strategically globally. Mm -hmm. You know, they have access to people that can get their message out in English and can help them. Mm -hmm. But there's this whole middle tier of, you know, of artists here that, you know, don't, that aren't in the mainstream limelight every day, but they're just, you know, amongst the world's best musicians. They're just great players. They're creative people. They're great performers. And, you know, they just can't, you know, get any exposure. Is and that, so I want to help them. Is that the category that's often called indies? I suppose you could say indies, yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's mm -hmm. kind of multiple, you know, definitions and dimensions mm -hmm. to, you know, indies music. Sure. And to uh, a certain degree, there's a major aspect of Indies music, but then there's also an Indies aspect. Of an Indies, indies aspect, music. Indies, yes. Um, what is the most common genre? But of... it doesn't have, excuse me, it doesn't have to be like, you know, Indies per, as much as just an artist, for example, that, you know, is a great player, is a great, you know, composer, is a great performer, you know, uh, puts together their own image, you know, uh, puts, you know, takes care of their own sort of communications, whether it's through social media, maybe even press their own CDs and sell it at their live events. They've mm -hmm. got their own little core fan base that follows them around. Um, but they're just, you know, limited by what they themselves personally can do. And so I would like to sort of set up, a, you know, a sort of a, an infrastructure where, you know, artists and acts like that can continue doing what they're good at. And then, you know, I could come in and help them with the, the global dimension, you know, getting getting their, first of all, getting information about them out there in English. Sure. And second of all, getting them, you know, hopefully uh, uh, putting them in a situation where they can grow an overseas fan base the way some other, you know, Japanese acts like baby metal even or band made. There are a lot mm -hmm. of, there are a lot of actually Japanese acts that, that if you see it on Facebook, there are these, these, you know, uh, fan base groups. Uh, that's completely fan operated and you know there's just you know hundreds and thousands of people that are just into it and mm. and then you know these people of course connect with that the bands themselves so yeah. are you suggesting that let's use the united states as an example mm -hmm. that there's a lot of interest in japanese music in the united states which is one of the reasons why you wanted to well i think there's a that subculture of anime this yes. there there's a subculture of people that just think everything about Japan is great. And they come here, you know, I actually have, you know, younger family members who come here every year. They're just totally into it and they come and see, they kind of, they come and see the same thing every time, but they also add something new each time too. And, mm. but, 
you know, it's, it's always pop culture oriented stuff like the Rambin Museum and, you know, everything <laughs> related. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a genre of Japanese music that's not popular? Uh, I mean, obviously, no, anime is, you know, as you said, is... I don't know. My attitude about music is it's a, is it's a personal thing, um, you know, personal taste thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, there are people out there for everything that's out there, period. And, you know, I would imagine the least accessible Japanese music would be Anka, you know. Oh, yes. Um but when you're actually living here, it's kind of, you know, you're exposed to it. And, uh, sure. I don't know. Mm. I've never heard of anybody overseas sort of like, you know, being, you know, Anka fans. But it wouldn't be unusual. I mean, people are Polka fans. There are, <laughs> there are people. I've seen them on TV. Yeah. You know, that's actually, you're right. Foreign, you're right. I've foreign seen, born yes. people who come yeah, here. Yeah, they come on. They actually, on TV he, he, and was, actually he was from the songs, U.S., yeah. actually, I believe, yeah. the guy. And, uh, yeah. and uh, I know who you're talking fantastic about. voice. I can't yeah. remember his name right now. He's absolutely great, mm-hmm. and he's uh, Anka Pro, um, right up with the with the top people's put out albums mm-hmm. and everything like that. Mm-hmm. So you need to do some Anka as well. Obviously, there's a market for it, yeah, or maybe. else he wouldn't be in it. But you know, speaking of you know, just the personal taste aspect of music, you know, um, we live in an age where you know, like in global music, uh, there there's a wide variety, certainly. But, you know, what is considered sort of the mainstream, I think, has always sort of been narrow, but it's it's more narrow now than really it's ever been. Uh, I think, yeah, a lot of the... If we just look at Japanese music, there's like the AKB48 phenomenon. Yes, yes. You know, and all the emulations of that, you know, that is what it is. You either like that or you don't or you're indifferent mm-hmm. to it. True. You know, if you're a jazz fan, you know, you're you're likely to be more of a very serious music listener, you know, mm-hmm. at a technical level. Um because it requires effort to actually appreciate, you know, and understand jazz, I think, you know, and there are other musics that are, you know, in that way as well. But, you know, the point I'm trying to make is, um, I'm not so interested in those mainstream things that, you know, is already out there. I want to find these sort of like hidden gems I see. Um, that has something a little bit unusual and un- maybe unorthodox about it, but mm-hmm. it's still accessible and not just like crazy off the wall or anything. But it's kind of like, whoa, that's different. It's kind of like a little bit challenging, even in some cases. So, mm-hmm. like, but I do want to help. I do want to help the musicians first and foremost, because, you know, the average musician you know, they're, they're great and, and gifted and special, you know, just uh, because they're a musician and people like that, you know, often, um, you know, don't really have any acumen for the business side of it. And so they get taken advantage of, and, you know, they don't make the money that they deserve to make from, you know, the art and the work that they do. It's very difficult, uh, to succeed not just in music, but also in television, mm. uh, entertainment, or in comedy mm-hmm. here in Japan, unless you have a, an office, a talent mm-hmm. uh, agency that works with you. Mm-hmm. So in a sense, um, Ubik's new explorations into the world of, mm-hmm. of uh, entertainment production mm-hmm. is going to be, in a way, like a talent agency or a record label that, that the people can can rely on to help them get their stuff out there. Yeah. Well, I, I don't know that talent agency would be the right model, but um, we're, we're talking to a, a record company in the United States based in Denver called Color Red, mm-hmm. and they're coming into the Japanese market. And so mm-hmm. it's likely we'll be tying up with them and helping them, helping each other in some way. Mm-hmm. And they, first and foremost, you know, it was started by, you know, a musician um, who, you know, was, you know, philosophically, you know, his headspace is the same as where I am. You know, it's like he could see that, you know, there's all these great musicians that all they just want to do is play. And, but they're not able to sort of like live by just playing just because they don't have their, their music business, their, their business house in order. Sure. And they don't know how to get it in order. Right. You know, they don't have their publishing in order. You know, even simple things that's just the, the basic thing every musician should have taken care of. It's, you know, it's complex and not so easy to deal with, you know, it requires lawyers and, you know, all kinds of, you know, layers that don't really mix well with, you know, the creativity of making music. Mm. Right. 
so Color Red is really basically established, you know, help, you know, basically be a haven for artists to come in. They've built a studio and so people can come in and like play and record and they just basically record live in the studio and put out records and they've put out dozens of records so far. And they want to grow and they want to get involved in like every type of, you know, genre of music. And again, it just comes back around to what I was, you know, the original point I was trying to make is, you know, people like what they like. And, you know, as a small sort of enterprise, you know, wanting to help, you know, musicians, mm-hmm. you know, I just want to focus on sort of things that I can really relate to the type of music that, you know, really gets, you know, gets me started up and going, you know, and not just music for music's sake, to be honest. Sure. Um, you were also a guitar player. In my younger days, yeah. So, I was, you know, I was in a band and, oh, yeah. And I was more into, like, harder, you know, edgier music, mm-hmm. industrial type. You know, Do darker music. Darker music. Yeah. yeah. I wonder how that works. You mean metal? That's one of, <laughs> one of many <laughs> dark things. One of many dark things. Yeah. Um, you, uh, uh, with your, uh, this new sort of enterprise into the entertainment music industry, um, is you be basically going to be outbound or is there also an inbound component? It's, it's both. Yes. We're looking at, um, as I say, so the common theme is something like unusual, unorthodox, but still accessible. Mm-hmm. And... Um, you know, we have, we, we're interested in Japanese acts, and we're also interested in foreign acts. Uh, we're based here, so the most important thing is, you know, what we can do for Japanese acts going abroad. <laughs> but, you know, we do know people in the industry here, and we do, uh, you know, associate with, you know, the opposite, you know, the foreign acts that are coming in through here uh, that the Japanese love uh, or discovery. And, you know, we want to help, you know, them as well mm-hmm. um and so yeah so we, we're starting out basically we'll release you know one japanese act and one foreign act is sort of just sort of to get our model started and then we'll just add other acts from there going forward what's next after you get this entertainment portion built i think what's next is literally uh, you know there's, it's one thing to, to find artists and make those artists music available. It's like how to, uh, you know, it's going to be a big enterprise to, uh, to put a system in place that's going to allow people to find that music, mm-hmm. purchase that music. Um, so I actually want to explore podcasts, like using maybe a podcast show about Japanese music artists. Uh, a format like this, where the artist and a and a host, you know, a bilingual host, you know, could sit down and talk to a Japanese person and 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 have them say whatever they want to say, and know that people overseas are like, you know, able to understand what they're saying. Mm-hmm. They can say it in their own language, and the host can say it for them. For example, or you can lay in subtitles. But I think a, a recurring show where, you know, as I say, even similar to this one, where every show is a different artists talking about themselves and you can, you know, be exposed to them and their music. Mm-hmm. Um, that's what the real next goal is, is, is to get some kind of publicity, you know, operation in place like that. I think it's a good idea. Podcasting is interesting because like we're doing right now, <clears throat> uh, my audience uh, gets to know you. I mean, all the great things you do, but also you like as a person, mm-hmm. what the, what you think, mm-hmm. what, what your opinions are about things. And it's very human and very warm. Mm-hmm. Um, by having a podcast, you know, artists who put out a CD or put out music on iTunes or whatever, it's the music. There's no person there. It's just the music. Yes. But having a podcast format, somewhere where you can yes. talk, is, uh, you know, extract from them strange, quirky things about them mm-hmm. that, that add that human element. I think it's a great idea. Well, that's what I want to do. And part of the people that we're working with is, you know, also thinking about the same idea. So we're going to see what we can do to make it happen. Thanks for tuning in. For more insights on Japan from people who know Japan, be sure to subscribe to the Ronjiru Japan YouTube channel right now. Just click the subscribe button below this video and the notification bell so you'll always know when we post something new. From Ronjiru Japan in Tokyo, I've been JT. See you in the next video, everyone. Okay, get in there.